happening, everyone? Today is Wednesday, Survivor Wednesday, I'm going to call it. Uh, welcome to the stream. Glad to have a few people here. Uh, me and SJ were just talking back uh, in the green room about uh, how, well, I guess I'll, I'll just suggest that uh, we are a couple of the few people who do Survive streams. So if you're welcome to anyone out there, you're welcome to start. You're not going to get uh, all the clicks and all the views and I don't monetize anyway, so I don't really care about that. Uh, but if you want to come here and ask about the hex price, you feel free to do so as well. We'll field some questions, but uh, I think it's going to be a fun conversation. Uh, SJ, it's been up to a lot in the sci vibe world. I've been up to a little bit as well. We could talk about that. And uh, we're going to go through some commentary. I'll, I'll drop a link in the, of the blog. I'll bring it up a little bit later, but if you guys want to get a sneak peek of the stuff that I worked on, a bit of a bunch of commentary on all the chapters of sci vibe last year, end of last year. And fix the world as well after SJ uh, finished the uh, version of that. Got around to doing that as well. So we'll get into it. But uh, let me say hi to the chat real quick before we get Doug. What's happening, Doug? You made me think of the Doug show. Doug, 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 Bring back nostalgia. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for coming. Yeah, the t share rate, Godwell. We pray to the Godwell. We thank the Godwell. We thank the OA. We thank all the benevolent wells out there and giving us that sweet, sweet payout in Hex. Getting us closer to Hexco every day. Mel and Tink, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thanks for coming. Bird Dog, is Godwell coming on the show? How do you know he or she isn't already here? Never know. Never know. It's a mystery. SJ's in the green room. She can't wait to come in. Boom. Welcome to the show. You're in. What's going on? She appears. The wild, the wonderful SJ Pierce. She's back. Yeah, how long has it it's been? Let's see. When's the last time we did a stream? We did. I did your stream. mystery, mystery stream. Oh, you, you came on 100 percent uptime. That's right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, That's I forgot, but that's been, it's been a few months. But uh, yeah, you came on 100 percent uptime, and we talked about. Well, back then things it was a different world. It was a different sci-fi <laughs> world back then. Uh, mm -hmm. What? Once like there has been some updates. You did the re-recordings. Curious to talk about that. Like, what's got, what's the pulse? What's the pulse of the sci yeah, out there? The pulse of the sci vibe is it's honestly, it's interesting to think about the crypto cycle, right? You know, there's that chart that goes with all the feelings. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. how I feel like I went through kind of a lull or a downturn with the sci vibe work because I had been working on it for so long, all these different parts of it in a way. So I got a little burnt out. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But then, honestly, Max, you were a big part of just like the revival of me being like, "Yes, this is so worth it. Like, it's so worth my time. Like, get your shit together. So awesome when it's done. Yeah. yeah. So I appreciate you for that. And it's um, basically what is happening now is that 100% completed. Well, not 100%, but from the intro to the money chapter. So up up to power, right? Money, power, respect. It's yeah. been edited by myself and then narrated, narrated, narrated and edited. And then, and I've now passed it off to you. And I think you should talk about what's what, happening, what it, what it is you want to talk about. Yeah, well, it's uh, take the baby. We'll kind of. <laughs> got the baby baby's in hand i will talk i will talk about the baby now yeah that's <laughs> one thing i wanted to i haven't really shared yet that i wanted to wait for till we got on stream too is everyone we have an editor we i, I don't know if we had an editor we kind of i mean we have an editor who is not related to sci-vibe community who has exactly. taken on the the job of or continued the work of sj's uh, um, amazing revisions and and reading and and just uh, getting it in good enough shape getting the unedited version which i read on an airplane like four years ago four or five years ago now and it was very hard to crock it was very hard so it's already gotten much better shape uh with sj's hands and other people in the community helping out now we have it to an editor who has been hired and is getting actually paid to do the work so i think that uh, she has really good reviews and and been really easy to work with so far so me and sj have have helped uh hand her the work to mm -hmm. go and edit. And I, she, if all goes well, maybe by the summer, by I think June, uh, May or June timeframe, we should have 
an edited version of Richard's first book. So I like, and I know blood, sweat, and tears. It's been a long That's time. So awesome. and, uh, it's, Just it's so fun. Yeah. The, your passion for getting that done. And you know, there's a stream that I'll, I'll put the link in a moment, but I listened to Richard from 2017 last night and this was before, or I think it was, yeah, 2017. It was before Hex was kind of an idea for him. And he was just talking about Sci Vibe. He was talking about the book mm -hmm. and he was talking about how like important it is, like what he's working on. And he was just like, yeah, I'm like 250,000 words into this book and this, that. I was just like, it just reignited that. <laughs> Every time I hear him mention it, really, you know, it's just like, okay, yeah, this is a really big deal and um, it's going to be worth all of the time and energy and effort and money and everything that's getting put, put into it. It's really, I am stoked because I think it's wise to have someone who doesn't know who Richard is, take it and like from an outside perspective, do some editing. <laughs> Cause it's, yeah. it's hard as someone who listens to him and knows how he speaks to separate from wanting it to, be his authentic sounding voice and also wanting it to be very like read in a very well readable <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say sounds yeah, good consumable way yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah it, it's one of the books that it needs to speak to you like to, to get into it and that's the reason why you know we put so much time and energy and and effort into getting getting it out there and talking about it and one of the reasons at least is it is valuable uh, work that people can read. It can change your life. It can get you on a better path. It can just help you be more efficient and effective as a human being. And that's when I first started uh, following Richard and I found out he had a book and I was looking at some old tweets today too, just randomly. I, I was looking up sci vibe stuff and then I came across 2018 and where he published it and it's on the internet archive.org and all the, all the old stuff is still on there, all the original stuff. Um, nice. But it, yeah. but it's something that it, especially with you with reading it and then I think, and you could talk about too, some of the motivations uh, of re-recording, but it's, it seems like your, you know, your first time going about it, your first time doing it, you, you get a, you get a certain feeling, you get a certain touch with it. But then once you, if you do it again, and maybe more than once or twice or three times, and you're kind of like, mm -hmm. okay, I, you, know, you almost hear him at that point. You hear what he's trying, exactly. the message he's trying to convey more than the words themselves. So exactly. hey, do you want to talk about that? Like what, why, why did you just start re-recording it? Because we all love the original recordings. So you must have had a good reason to to do more, right? Yeah, that makes my heart happy to hear for sure. And that's that's part of why getting so much good feedback from people about all of this has made me more passionate about using my voice. So I've I've talked about this a little bit recently. I switched from being an actress to a voice actor because of sci-fi and hearing everyone be like, oh, you sound great. So now it, I mean, it like makes so much sense with my lifestyle. I get to be a digital nomad and do all that. But in that pivot, I took a class. I took an audio narration class and I wanted to know, I knew, I already knew, I believe when I was done the, with the first edition of SciVive, I already knew that I wanted to do it again because I wanted to edit it. I was like, I, I, this is really great. And <laughs> I think this book is awesome and more people need to hear about it. So it should be like, people should be able, able to have access to it <laughs> more. Yeah. Right. And the, there are certain checks that have to be met for it to be on audible specifically. So yeah, specifically, you have to have certain noise, like the noise floor has to be a certain place and that your peaks can't be too high. And so it has to follow these checks and then it's, then you can put it on audible. But without that, they would just, we could put it on Spotify and things like that. But I, from hearing what Richard says about it, right? And this is all just at what everyone else has heard on stream. It, he wants a published book. He wants a publication. He wants it to be, you know, I, I've heard him say multiple times he wants a paid version of it. And I think that makes sense. I think it does. People want to pay, people should pay for this kind of knowledge. And it's been awesome that we've had the luxury of not having to. For, for so long and i, I quite the go. opposite we well well i, I well I, I was trying to say that we've not only been we've been enjoying it for free but 
the ulterior uh, editing form of it, we've we've actually been putting the their you know time and money and stuff into it. Funny enough, True. But, but yes, every, the broader community having it for free, I think, is the point. Yeah. yeah. So far, so far. Yeah. So that that's a long answer to <laughs> to your question. Is really just wanting to, it to be pristine and really something that is able to be presented to Audible and any other platform that is going to be a professionally heard. Uh, broadcast it, is it, so is that the plan after you re-record all of it you want to turn it into audible and, and that yeah. that route yeah awesome awesome it's the first time i'm hearing it so yes that sounds awesome i i love audible i use it all the time to listen to audiobooks and i would definitely uh you know buy it and download it and, and listen to the brand new recording of it uh from there so that makes perfect sense as motivation is to re-record it you want to tick the boxes to make sure it gets a hits a broader audience with with audible fantastic yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it will. I think it will. I think we'll, we have the ability to kind of make it shine, you know, when, when Mexicans kind of get together and point each other to, to doing a little task, we can make a decent increase in traffic. So I'd be willing yeah. to bet we could get it seen. But, but when it gets edited, so that's the part, and we haven't even talked about this yet either, but I was, I was thinking what happens next? So like, let's say, you know, the, it, it's edited, it looks good. And this summer, do we just, you know, email Richard and be like, Hey, it's been edited. What do we, what do we do now? What would you want to, are we doing print? What, what's going on? So that was something that I reached out about on Twitter a while back to people. And I did get a few responses. So there are people within our community that know how to publish. And basically I think the best route, I mean, we, we could have like hive mind it, right? Fig figure out the best way to go about publishing it. Cause it has to be, once it's edited from this editor, we'll have to give it to someone to put it into the publication format basically. So that's a whole other task. I learned that this is a really cool thing to learn all these different steps in the process of having an actual book printed. Cause y'all, yeah. Ooh, it is involved. There's because there's not just someone who you have to talk to about the digital printing layout that's going to go to the person who's going to print the book, but then the actual physical printer of the book, they have to know what kind of paper you want, what kind of ink you're going to use, what kind of cover you want it to have. So there's all these super intricate details. And if anyone can find on the internet where Richard may have talked about what kind of crystalline format he wants his precious book in, let me know if that exists. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if he's ever talked about what, uh, what kind of. I think I've actually I've tried to because I try to ask him things all the time. Uh, so I was just like, hey, what, what do you want it to look like? You know, do you want this or that other thing? And so maybe yeah. it's on the internet somewhere. Maybe he's talked about it once. Well, actually, uh, I've I talked to Matt Garabedian, the author of that the the first hex book. Mark Wilde wrote a hex book that came out recently, or a second crypto revolution book, which covers hex and pulse chain and pulse X. And then uh, Matt Garabedian, who wrote the hex book that a lot of us are familiar with. There's actually one before that written by somebody else, but the one that I interviewed him on, I uh, actually talked to him about it, and he knows a publisher and says they're super easy to work with. And again, we we haven't talked about this yet, but that's something that. Maybe if we just, if we have the edited format and we just need someone to print it and make it into a book and, you know, we have these lists of options and maybe Richard gives input and maybe he doesn't, however, we're able to proceed. Uh, I think we, I think there's a clear, in my mind, at least that's what I try to do. You seem like working with me too. It's like, I, I just, I want things to happen. Like I want it to happen. Like, how can we do this? Right. Like, that's the question. Like, how can we make these pieces come together to, you know, get the book edited and get it in print because I we both want to see it happen. So yeah. to me, it's like there's a clear path. Like, hey, we get it edited, and then we find a publisher, right? And that's yep. do we do we? I think the only question is like, if if where does the money from the publishing go to? <laughs> like, I'm not saying I want it, but like, how do we get it to Richard? That would if, be exactly that. Would, so that would be something. We would just have to like all hands on deck, everyone at once, send him a message on every platform at the same time. Like, <laughs> Give us your ETH address so publisher can give you money. Yeah, yeah. no, and, and then that's for sure. Uh, you know, we'd Do have we to send it to the out. OA? Do we just get the OA daughter addresses and just, here you go, no, publishers? But nobody knows who the OA is. Well, nobody that's true. Knows. It's definitely not, it's definitely not Richard. 
could, could um, not be. But yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think that that would be something that we could bug him about and maybe he'll answer us, maybe. Yes, we're going to swarm this. That's a good idea. We should put the things together that are important for this, and then we swarm to get an answer of some yeah, sort. Yeah, because he's busy right now. I think he's busy being in love. That's my wild guess. And being in love. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. he's busy love. being in love. Yeah. Yeah, he's talked about the some of the favorite things he likes to do. That's true. Yeah. It could be, it could be that. Yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know. He gets on, he gets on Twitter to, to say stuff every once in a while. It's like, yeah, just tweet the answer at us. You could just, if we just, a lot of people hit you up, maybe you can just give us an answer yeah. every yeah. few months or so. I, I think he could do that. I don't think it'd be hard. So that's exciting. Maybe Saga comes out in 2023. <laughs> I would, that's, oh my goodness what a dream i i wanted it to it come is. out last year to be honest with you i just to be honest there's a lot of my own life things going on and uh as you can hear recording at this hour in the place i currently am is not really a viable option <laughs> so there's gotta, there's been just a lot of different uh things that have kept me from recording very quickly right um, and then on top of that, as I'm recording, I'm doing my last Passover editing it. So I'm as I'm reading it, it, it's working out very well because as I'm reading it, I am catching still things that it's just like, well, when I'm saying these words, they don't sound right. <laughs> like that, that phrase or sentence really didn't make sense. Or uh, oftentimes there'll be places where it seems as if the sentence starts with a... Um, like a this or that statement, right? But then the that never happens, or it like just yeah. kind of runs on into something else. And I'm just like, what? What was it? You know, you sent me a zinger the other day. You sent me that one, and I was like, I, <laughs> I sent you my best response, but I'm still not 100 percent sure that's what he meant. It was yeah. some of the there's that's I mean that's what the editor is there for. Like they're 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 that's their expertise. They're there to figure out yeah. what the author intended to to say by by the words or. The clues that they have so hopefully she yeah. can uh fix a lot of that stuff I but so. no, I, I mean did, just i didn't do a lot of that too but there were like you saw there are some i'm just like mm, okay yeah it's because there's yeah that, it's it, it's a lot there's a lot going on in the book yep. but again we're, we're getting it solved and you shouldn't have to do it by yourself either like that's why i want to get more involved i'm like you know it shouldn't be just you or a handful of people that are volunteering their time here and there if yeah. i'm able to if I'm able to help in, in whatever way, facilitating or, or this, otherwise. Honestly, it's like... it's the best. Well, you know, and that's that's the smart thing, right? Is to be aware of what like my time is worth, right? Because because I'm not a professional, right? And this that was my first time ever doing an audiobook, was the first version of SciVive. And then while I have edited in the past, it's not my profession. To pay someone to do it who's professional, right? It's gonna get done so much quicker than <laughs> you know someone who's just doing it as a passionate show of uh, appreciation this community it's it's gonna be yeah yeah very very well done i'm stoked i'm stoked on it summer What's that the then, yeah yeah just going through chat we got a franklin. few we got a bus question i'll post here in a second too what's up franklin bus. Dear you chat, did we did we did you stream with this guy? I feel like I was on stream that one time with D Raj. Or is that a different person? I've streamed with D Raj, yeah. Yeah, Tex Booty. Dr. D Raj. Was I on that stream? I was on the stream with, with you and another gentleman. I don't remember his name, hmm. but maybe it wasn't D Raj. Just remember these these handful of sci-fi streams we did last yeah. year. Uh somebody had a butt. Oh yeah. Uh Uncle Will. Un Uncle Will. There you go. Uncle how's Will. how's your bus doing? My bus, my bus, my bus is doing well. It is uh... <laughs> my lovely lady bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's chilling. The bus is just uh, being parked right now, and I'll I'll be uh, getting some more details done on the inside to make it more like my style. <laughs> is it so... in? Uh... Is it where you are now or did you no, I guess you no. probably can't transport it yet, I imagine. No, you could, you could, but uh that won't be until a while from now. Yeah, if 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 I would move it. I think I would just leave it in the in the States to have a little house on wheels there. 
have some oh I think you said to have some hot meals <laughs> hot meals that the, too well, nice to have hot <laughs> meals <laughs> yeah shelter is important um mm -hmm. I was watching I watched a Mr. Beast video for the first time yesterday huh. and it was because I've been staying away from it. I'm like I know I, he's the best YouTuber if I watch it I'm gonna like start spending time it's gonna get recommendations and I just don't it's a great it's like he does great stuff I just don't want to spend I, time consuming content like that because it's just not helpful it's just entertainment so i try to limit my entertainment but i did it yesterday i broke down like i gotta i gotta watch him you know i'm on youtube i feel like i should see what he's doing and just like maybe get something from it and i watched he's he did one that's uh he stayed in a one dollar uh hotel which was just like this bed in india in a hallway wow. all the way up to a million dollar palace and the the two the fifty dollar the and then he did like one dollar fifty dollar hundred dollar all these different ranges up to a million and the fifty dollar one i think was a bus <laughs> and uh two two of his friends stayed in the bus and uh they they had a they had a time it wasn't the best because they were they were in the bus and the other guys they were in like the um, underwater private island you know they would <laughs> switch back and forth doing different ones it was it was hilarious but anyways reminded me of the bus video from mr, mr. beast yeah yeah it's comfy it's a comfy little bus um Wanted to, I'll just go through the chat here and see what's going on. How that helped. Yeah. If you're building awesome stuff for Hex, that's a good thing to do. As long as having utility in the community, that's what motivated me to start streaming. It's what motivated me to help with SciVive. It's like, mm -hmm. I want to have utility and stuff, definitely stuff that I believe in like that. And I believe that more people should um, have access to it. And like SJ says, it's uh, spend your time where you think it's most wisely spent. And it can be on Hex, it can be in SciVive, it can be Pulse Chain, whatever you like. <laughs> Back to the publisher sending a... <laughs> that would be funny <laughs> if we could get the publisher to buy Hex and then send it to a hey, or whoever else. Buy pressure. <laughs> buy pressure. Price go up. Oh, no. Price uh -huh. go up. With buy pressure. <laughs> yes. Um, soon you'll be able to buy Hex with Hex. Not sure what that means. But I like it. I do like <laughs> it. Uh, what's up, Crypto Truth? Good to see you. Um, yeah, you want to do, we'll talk about some of the commentary too, I thought, uh, since, again, I never have a chance to do it until we do SciVive streams. But Yeah, absolutely. I miss talking about SciVive, to be honest. I have been negligent with my streaming. <laughs> my streaming in general oh yeah i know you used to stream like all the time and then uh, yeah then it's pretty rare to see you on stream these days that's true that's true i mean you've been i mean I've, like for good reason you've been super busy so it's just uh yeah i remember you were doing you were doing uh wednesdays sundays mm -hmm. uh on all kinds of different shows so yeah so today so me and you right now this is number one of six for the next three days for me wow yeah. And, and then after that, I'm taking like 10 days off, but like, I'm like, oh, I got to get in these, these, these streams before I go. And then I'm going to take a little, and my time off is just me going to another place, but I'm still going to be working on some stuff like crypto stuff and, and hex stuff. I'm still going to be working on it just in a different environment in a different context. And I'm not going to be streaming uh, on this channel. So yeah, we're here. Number one okay. of six, uh, start starting off with, uh, could be the best stream actually could be, Ooh. never know. Like yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll take that. Duraj, Duraj <laughs> says, uh, I think we're we're in space together. I, I've only been on two spaces, so it's either Crypto Truth Survive space or that was probably it. Probably it, yeah. Because I, I don't imagine you were on the. I mean, you could have been on the the security space I was on the other day with Papa Boner, but uh, I'm not I'm not sure. It had to be that one, then I'd say. Cool. I'm gonna throw up. Every, I need to stop saying that phrase because when I say throw up. At least myself, I think of that <laughs> instead of putting up some things. But I keep saying it every stream. Let me throw this up. And I'm like, imagery, imagery. Uh, let me put on the screen. Wow, look at that. There it and is. I'll, drop, I'll drop this one in the chat in case uh, people want to follow along. But today, we're going to talk about time, space, events. And you know what? I need some clarification, too, because... How many chapters are in SciVive? Is it nine? Is it 10? Is it so, eight? I, originally, how many secrets to save the world? Yeah, please tell everyone this because I, I need to know too. From what I understand, originally there were nine and then longevity was added later. Okay. Um, so so there zero are is intro. 
And then yeah. nine secrets to a better life, save the world. Like that's the deal. And then 10 longevity was added later. Okay. Either like, yeah, added later or just like as an afterthought turned into a subset, like a 10th t- section. Gotcha. Yeah. So it could still could be, what is it? Is, is it nine? Let me, let me nine just wa- real quick. I think I, it's- nine ways to something. Nine. Let's see. Wait, because I've seen it. Uh, I've been nine secrets. There we go. These nine secrets will make your life amazing. Okay. So the nine secrets are uh, the money, power, respect, uh, all those. Yep. My and then long- mm-hmm. Yeah. And then longevity is this is so important. It must be in the book, not part of the nine secrets. But I mean, should it be? Should there be 10 secrets now? But nine is like the magic number, right? Like three, six, nine. Maybe you right. want to keep nine like that. And longevity is like this other thing that that is important and we need to include it though is that that what you think happened i i honestly that part i don't know yeah okay we'll save the swarm for richard on that one maybe we won't do it on that one we'll save it for the publisher yeah i i would hope i i've asked him to no avail to come on a stream with me sometime i think maybe if i sent him a bunch of questions like oh it'd be so just be so nice to just get answers about a lot of these things and also, just to hear him talk about it again, he was—he loved it so much, and I feel like it's his, his abandoned, redheaded stepchild. <laughs> I, I think he's definitely prioritizing it. Um, I think he's prioritizing, of course, Pulse Chain right now. Hex is finished, right? But maybe right. there's some, some other stuff he wants to do around that, or, or watch the community do. They've done a bunch of stuff, and then he said, like, "What he wants to do after crypto is longevity." Yeah, I've said before, crypto is a means to an end to what he wants to do. He wants to get all this money together to save everyone's real lives with longevity medical research. The Heart Foundation, I propose. Maybe that'll stick. I don't know. Yeah, Heart. Um, Yeah, I think it's it's a good name. I like Heart Foundation. Uh, Mm -hmm. Sounds like something people would want to donate to, right? It sounds like even you may even get people who like care about like uh, cardiac stuff. (laughs) They may confuse it and accidentally contribute to saving their own lives in a different way. Whoops! You did a better thing. You, you, we, we got you. We got you in the system <laughs> to help people uh, do more than uh, heart attacks and that whole spiel he has about, you know, cure cancer, cure uh, whatever it was. It only gives you two years. You cure aging. Right. Boom. Sky's the limit. Yep. Um, what was I going to say? Exactly. So, oh, yeah. So priorities. Yeah. I think he has deprioritized it. I still think he cares. He just deprioritized it. But oh, if you sure. are able to get, if anyone can do it, it'll be you. If you're able to get a 60 minute conversation on SciVi with him, it may just break the internet. Like that would be amazing. And the, the chat AMA, it would either be filled with hundreds of questions from other people or just me, but I got a lot of questions too. And uh, yeah. it would be great. Yeah. Cause it's, it's such a different side of him. You know, it's that side that every, like a lot of people want to see more of that. And I think it'd be just Awesome. Maddie Allen, I think, gets to talk so, to him a little bit about that kind of stuff, but we'll go deep. <sighs> it's going to be great. We need, we need some public conversation on so I have to, to revitalize. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. the book, I mean, if we're able to actually get it published, he might come on to do like a a, a book, a virtual book tour, right? Yeah. That's, that'd be a good reason. That's a, great, that's a great suggestion. I like that idea a lot. All right. All right. Richard, I know you're not watching this, but if you were, <laughs> hear it in your mind and channel it and manifest it, please. Por favor. Um, so time, you want to give a, you want just maybe just an introduction to time, just so people, it's so abstract, you know, the, like the, the title, but is it just about making like, going through it? What have you got at a time? Like, what do you think is the, the main message of it? So my stream broke up for a moment, but the I just heard just heard the gist of the question is what did I get out of time basically? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I and I, I heard a little bit of what you were saying before you got broken up, and I after it's it's such a all encompassing because that's to me nearly every chapter, regardless of what the title is, a lot of the topics discussed within those chapters could be put within many other chapters within the book or various other chapters within the book. Um, so, so t- I mean, he, he talks about everything, I think, from how to spend your time, 
right? Like from basic things about not one of the ones, I think this is from time. I'm pretty sure uh, he talks about not um, meditate, like playing with your thoughts and like sitting with your thoughts, but not as a monk trying to, to destroy thought as like someone who wants to play with their thought and, you know, Im imagine and envision different things. So everything from that to, you know, talking about using an app to give you reminders and scheduling, you know, reminders about birthdays and things so that you don't waste time, you know, forgetting, <laughs> you know, you don't forget. Okay. So things. like, yeah. I wonder, have you tried to give a subtitle or description of some of these chapters? Because for example, this one, I, first thing that comes to mind after you saying that is don't waste time, you know, stuff like that. I feel like he did that a lot. Like all of the, all of the subheadings, like that was all there. It's, it's very broken down into. That's right. Into he does. Text. And the intro is really good too. If anyone hasn't, like, I think I'm excited. That's one of the most exciting things. I, I think I'm looking forward to hearing from the editor and seeing what she does with it. Because I think the intro, even as is, is a fantastic, like pull you into what we're trying to do type of thing. Mm -hmm. and an edited version of that like i wonder what she's going to come back with or, or what she's going to change and um i just think that's a it's a great introduction to ch to try to get you into what like what this thing is about like what the yep. whole thing is whether you call it a church whether you call it a um a, a group a program a, a lifestyle it just yeah i think the intro is really good i just uh yeah, and maybe the, yeah. I guess the chapters do kind of go into it too. Um, of course, you can't see it right here because I'm just uh, quoting a lot of the, the doing commentary on stuff. But uh, anyways, we'll just pick. I don't know. You want to pick a couple and talk about it? Having tunnel tunnel vision is more efficient than removing distractions. Yeah, that's kind of you were talking about playing time and, and playing with playing within your mind. Is that, uh, let's see, my commentary was setting aside, setting time aside, dedicated to being alone or working in a group where deep work is one of the most productive things you can ever do. Get up, take breaks, drink water, entertain minimal distractions, but get your work done. That's what I was getting out of it, synthesized. But yeah, what about you? Having tunnel vision is more efficient than removing distractions. I think a lot of people go through this thought process of, oh, um, I have to walk the dog or, oh, I have to cook this meal or, oh, I have to do this other thing. And so they're so focused on the things that they have to do that they don't focus on the thing that they should be doing. You know, like to me, that's, that's where, like where my mind goes with that is like, it's making that distinction between where your thoughts go in terms of all the things you have to avoid or, just laser focusing on that one thing that you actually have to do, have to like your pur purpose right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I found that it's the thing that most people struggle with and I've struggled with it a little bit too, but I think, I feel like I've got down a system where I'll have something, some nagging, you know, I have a to-do list and there's stuff on there and there's something I just do not want to do. So I see myself, it's almost like Naval talks about too, like putting yourself into bug mode. I see myself, doing everything I can to get away from doing it. I'll just like, I'll just, you know, look out in the yard. Oh, there's, Oh, I need to go, you know, move these rocks around or go clean up something. It's no, stop. You need to go do what's rest there, but stop trying to get out of it. So I see myself doing mm -hmm. this sometimes. And I think if you're not able to recognize when you're you know deviating, when you're trying to avoid something, and if it's something you actually need to do, maybe you don't need to do it, but if it's something you really need to do and you keep avoiding it to the last minute, and then you're not able to do it, you know, you're going to be late on it or you're going to miss the opportunity. That's when I think it's, it's key to, if you're able to see that and see yourself doing it and then stop yourself and say, no, like stop what you're doing. Don't do anything else. That's what I tell myself. Like you don't do anything else. You do this right now. And it's, it's just one of those things I found helpful to, to, to push past that sort of like angst of not wanting to do something that you actually need to do. Now, I think a lot of people they have a list of stuff they don't really need to do. They just have a bunch of stuff and they haven't really prioritized it. And they're just, they're on the list and they're like, oh, there's no consequence if you don't do them. But uh, yeah, I guess prioritization is one. And then uh, having a, having stuff. Yeah. I guess identifying the stuff you really need to do and then being ruthless about getting it done. Like that's, 
how I've like figured out how to be, how to, how to get a lot of stuff done. Really. That's, I feel like every day I can't help but be productive in, in various directions, whether I'm st streaming or I'm creating content or whether I'm working on side vibe stuff or my day job or uh, family. It's just like, I'm, I've, I've compounded myself. I've compounded, I've got this compound interest built up because I've been able to push through all the, all the self uh, pushback I've gotten from that. So um, I don't know. That's just one of my experiences for like getting through things. And I know you working on Savai too, and, and you talked about being burned out for, for a certain period of time. It's uh, how, yeah. How did you, how do you get back into it like that? How do you, mm -hmm. how do you manage your time in a way that doesn't get you burned out, but also you're able to produce a lot of stuff. Well, there's one thing I want to say kind of uh, backtracking a little, but when you're talking about focus, right. And, and distractions, it made me think about how often do so many of us go to do one thing on our phone? Like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to go post that to Twitter. Or, oh, I had someone message me on Instagram. I need to go reply to them. And then you grab your phone. Mm -hmm. And then half an hour later, you haven't done the thing that you grabbed your phone to do. Right? See, like, I, I think that's part of the self-sabotage. I think that's the avoiding mm -hmm. the thing that like... And, and I don't know how I figured out how to do this, but like literally putting yourself into bug button, like, like seeing that happen. Like, I, I guess it's like identifying the situation that's, that's happening and being like, okay, what's actually going to happen if I pick up my phone? Am I, am I just trying to avoid doing something else or am I picking up my phone because I need to, I need to reply to something important. Am I going to get lost for 30 minutes and come back and be like, Oh, what was I doing again? Let me helpfully forget that other thing that I was actually trying to do. So yeah. I, I, so many different self-sabotage ways. And that's, it's, um, I don't know, maybe we're programmed to do that too. I think well, a lot of it is. That. Yeah, I, no, I agree. I feel like that's, that's something that is becoming more of a programmed situation, right? Because we have these devices in our lives and it's just something that people, you know, they're going to seek they see all those distractions and it's like they seek the distractions now because it's been such a part of their, uh, what it is that they visually are stimulated with. But on the topic of, you know, coming out of a rut with SciVive, it was just a good, like a combination of a few different things and feeling like, <laughs> you know, feeling not alone in the process and knowing that so many people appreciate this work and want to see it done. I've had, I've had people every now and then just out of the blue ask me how it's going with the book and like what's going on with it. And like, it's nice to know that a lot more people care about it than, I mean, I never, I never realized, like I never would have known. <laughs> like it's hard to explain yeah. how, not even knowing who Richard was when I started really this project, what a crazy impact and what a, an insane uh, roller coaster of like just emotions. And, you know, the more I, the more I learn about Richard, honestly, so SciVive is, a, there's a line in SciVive that I read that was part of helping me get out of the rut. Cause it was a quote that we did, we posted recently about, the different, like not having, having more quality than quantity. And I was thinking about that with the side vibe quotes because it, <laughs> and also because of what Richard said on that stream. And I was like, okay, well, that's critique about what is being seen. And then hearing the, like just having the idea again about like, it's not, it's not about that. I'm just doing 369 of them right? Like the reason I'm doing them is to have people's attention drawn. And that's right. The whole thing is to get people like, just like Richard wearing his ridiculous, <laughs> like all those ridiculous clothes and doing what he does. Right. It's, yeah. it's the attention. It's wanting to grab that attention. So I've just pivoted and switched the whole thing so that I'm like in this whole getup and doing this whispering thing. And I'm about to switch it again. I got some more good feedback on how to make them more eye-catching. I switched it so that the titles are different now. It's not just the numbers, right? Like I really want to try and make one of these things go viral. So, you know, why not instead of just like 
reading it or you know doing what, like feeling feeling like it's a chore right i was like no mm. this needs, I, this is something i started that i wanted to like because i was so passionate about the book and i was like you know i want everybody to hear these little things and shorts were the thing at the time so that's yeah that's kind of part of what just sparked the like re re or like reignited <clears throat> just being excited about it because I also get to like play around with makeup and be sexy and whisper. And that's a whole new world for me in general. Like I have not connected with my femininity a lot in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's fun. And it's, it, I think that's part of why it's, that's another reason, right? Is that I'm having fun with it. And that's what's important is like, it's, you know, something that if I'm not having fun with it or I'm not feeling passionate about what it is that I'm doing, forget about it. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want it to feel like a job. You want it to feel like you're just, you're doing what you like. Right. So yeah. I think, yeah, the pivots for that. And just, it just reminded me too, or made me think of connecting with, because there's already, so there's SciVive. And there's crypto fam around SciVive. And, you know, a lot of people follow Richard percentage of them are in SciVive, most are in Hex, some are Pulse Chain, all that. But if we want to connect with the broader self-development world, that's a huge community. There's a lot of people follow Tony Robbins and follow just, just a whole bunch of just people who are writing these works. Jordan Peterson, you could throw him in there. Lots, there's a, a huge world. And that's one, maybe one opportunity that, that reminded me when you said that of just trying to have a, a broader reach uh, or, you know, doing different niches like the you know whispering and the asmr and, and all that maybe yeah. yeah maybe there's like some crossover with other uh communities that uh could could be triggered by different titles or i did some research because i want to do some more uh heck shorts and, and, and clip some more richard videos and it made me think you know you can use google trends you can look up the most popular words on uh, and search for stuff on tiktok and instagram and um, all those platforms. I wonder if we had a list of all the most popular self-development content that people are looking for, and then you were using those keywords or those type of titles or that kind of type of video or content, like directly appealing, kind of like what Fuu, Fuu Finance uh, tries to do with a lot of the heck stuff and that whole YouTube shorts group, that could be effective as well. I just, yep. just thought of that when you said that. So. Yeah, I need to get in the group. I know that exists, but that's uh, yeah. I, cause I, I think before I was being a little more. Um, I don't know what the word is. I just I think it's yeah because I was burnt out, so I was just like oh, I'm just posting them to all the things you know. But I am being a lot more mindful of the titles and tags for each platform, and I think I'm gonna I might stop doing Instagram just to not burn myself out. I'm just going to do YouTube, TikTok, and uh, Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Why, why is Instagram just harder to post? It is. It fit into? Okay. It, it, yeah. It's a little more, I have to, um, yeah, it's just not as seamless on the, on the phone or, or laptop, to be honest with you. It's like, I have to use two devices to do Instagram almost like, any either way i'm doing it okay yeah. i was just looking for i can, and i can't remember the i cannot remember the uh t may link but anyways i'll give it to you later i just want to show other people too if i had it but uh everyone search for fuer finance and telegram youtube tiktok stuff and you can get the link as well but uh, yeah yeah you should join that group and uh, there's a lot of people in there posting videos and tips and talking about different ways to get exposure and virality and uh, nice. uh, it's, it's like yeah i love it now. i saw this i think it was hexo posted something on twitter today just or recently just about like just talking about hex and pulse chain and you know just a really cool like marketing type tweet and it's just nice to see that it's exciting to see people <laughs> getting excited about things again and promoting and that's definitely it's it's nice that i don't feel like i ever stopped because <laughs> it's uh you yeah, know it's been so life-changing for me in a non-financial way <laughs> so i just can't can't help but talk about it um i just wanted to somebody posted earlier 
a word because we were trying to figure out what to call I think it's in in response to what we we're trying to figure out how to call or describe a situation of Cyvive. Brief swishel? Is that like a German word? Let me see. Let me look it up. Brief. And I think I looked it up a second ago and it's said something about this could be interesting. Exchange of letters, writings, correspondence. I mean, exchange of letters. Yeah, maybe. I guess uh, not knowing the German context, it could it could apply more to like book or a set of set of principles, uh, writings, things like that. Maybe that's uh, no, it could be br brief Wessel. I don't know how to pronounce that. Cool. No, thanks for the suggestion. It could be. Could be. All right. Uh, so time, and I'll just scroll down a little bit again. I, uh, yeah, eat the frog. I always love that one. That, yeah. Timing to do the most difficult thing first so you can enjoy the rest of your day without looming over your head. It's called eating the frog. Yes. That's uh, it's kind of what I do when I was talking about debug mode too. It's like, no, st stop what you're doing and do that thing. So, mm -hmm. and especially if you can do it in the morning, you don't have to worry about it the rest of the day. It's so yeah. much better. I like working out in the morning <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You can't be later on and not do what you want to do if you've already done it. Just, just like uh, those little mit, uh, mental, something. The mint is it an emotional trick or a mental trick. I'm not sure. One of those. So it was space. Uh, yeah. What is, you want to give like a brief introduction to space for people? Yeah. Space is not like uh, you'd think Elon Musk outer space. No, no. It's your surroundings. It's what you, well, I mean, environment is also that. Or, let's see. Space. Yeah, I think it's just like being aware of your space. Like being aware of what's surrounding you. I mean, that's the most basic. They're all so yeah, I mean full of so many nuggets. <laughs> Like this one, you know, we didn't invent territory. Lots and lots of other creatures figured out that uh, that idea on their own as well. Property works. Yeah, I think it's talking about that's I think that's what I've got. And, and of course, we'll go through some of the commentary too to give it more context. But the the ability to sort of kind of like you described, just have your own. Pro I think a lot of it, it relates to some of the, the American values, too, of like property rights and you know, I don't, I don't think we ever want to live in a world where everyone lives in a hundred story apartments, uh, single bedroom right. and it's you're stacked. all, yeah, you can't be, you can't develop, you can't be your best self. If you're constantly surrounded by people, you don't have that, that space to, to figure things out on your own and, uh, kind of forge your own path and not be constantly corrected or criticized. So I think space in, in a lot of ways that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I sound like I just talked about what I said here. Have your own space, uh, space and place exclusively organized and keep in who you like and keep out who you don't is fundamental in a society that encourages individual sovereignty and fulfillment of your own potential. It's hard to think for yourself when you're surrounded by people pushing thoughts and ideals you don't prefer and hard to create your own stuff when you're distracted helping others all the time. Mm, so true. That's such a such an important lesson to learn in life. It's taken me a long time to get to a place where I've had my own space, to be honest. So will the bus very... do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's, it's very important. It's, I don't know. It's, I think that's, you know, that's why, you know, ideally you don't live with your parents. You don't live in like six generation households for a long period of time, at least, or not, at least not your entire life, because you know, if you want to develop into your own you know, sovereign individual and not just mm -hmm. be constantly filled with the thoughts and ideas of other people, you need time alone and you need time to, uh, you know, space to make those mistakes and, and uh, see further than the people around you may be able to see too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And scrolling down. Yeah, let's go to events. So events, yeah. What do you, what's your recollection of events and why it's important? Is that it? I don't remember that being a chapter title. That, did I mess that up? Let's see. So I have events. Could have. 
Hmm. I think you may be right. Yeah. Let's see. I think I'm changing it. Hmm. We're going to figure this out because I would like to know that too. Yeah. Mo no, money, power, respect, time, space, events. How interesting. But, okay, let's look at your recordings and see what that chapter was. I, it wouldn't surprise me if there's different uh, versions Titles, of all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's just go this one. No. <laughs> hey, when that happens. <laughs> I know. I'm not signed in, so it's got all this crap here. Hey, where'd those come from? Um, <laughs> Where? Why can't I see? Why can't? Why am I having such a hard time figuring this out? Oh, view full playlist. So, six, seven times space, time, space, experience. 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 Interesting. The plot thickens. Yeah, that's a trip. What is going on? Okay, so experience. I want to check out, no, not that one. What did Richard say five years ago? <laughs> Let's see. Torrent. Did he say something about the thing about changing it? Let's see. Events. I hate when it doesn't, it won't show you the original. I think I've changed them to time space. Event. Is that where I got events? I got it from, what, is the sci fi website still up? <laughs> <laughs> I, I may have got it from that website, actually. I don't think it's still up. Uh, investigating, investigative research right now. Come on, give me a Wayback Machine so yeah. I can get SciVibe's original. I, I'm pretty sure when I was writing the blog, I was pulling them from the SciVibe.net listing, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, maybe that was pre-edit. There was an edit before my edit. I wonder if it was. So it's either that. So, all right, that's great. Scott Sci-Vibe Trivia. Is it experience or is it events? Uh, it could have been one or the other at, at uh, one point in time. <laughs> that is a great <laughs> like future trivia question. I yep. love it. Everyone listening, you're going to know the answer if we do that for trivia later on. <laughs> um, not today, but yet yeah, at another uh, one. Uh, Sci-Vibe.net. So there's nothing in 2023. So I think they took it offline in the new year. I wonder if it expired or something. But this, uh, December 7th. So by the way, if anyone who wants to look at an old version of a website that's no longer up, Wayback Machine. Yeah, right there. I knew it because I knew I went off of that. And uh, that must have been what it was. Events was on this unofficial but very official looking sci-fi website. And maybe he did change it or, and that didn't end up getting reflected in the chapters or some, somewhere or another, but he did talk about it. We did, we do see that. I wonder if you click on it, if it'll say events as the chapter heading. Hmm. Also. Let's see. Yeah. There you go. Oh so yeah. Was wow. This is, this is like pre, <laughs> pre edit, 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 edit. Is that what it was? Wow. So he, sure, he yeah, went from events to experience. I never saw a uh, copy that had word counts in it like that. The PDF oh, okay. that's linked in the SciVive chat is is more edited than this is. Wow. Investigative research. You all yeah. heard it here. SciVive used to be events and then was changed to uh, experience, it looks like. I'm going to have to update. I have to add that note in the blog too now. Cool. So events or experience, what is your, uh, I guess we'll go off of experience. What is experience? What it's does it tough because to I, I, that's past where I've re-edited. So it's been a minute since I've done, like re-read that part. But um... sounds like maybe emotions. Uh, see, stay sober. If you're drunk, when you're doing fun stuff all the time, you're hindering your memory from all the fun stuff. I feel like that was even one of the quotes somebody did before that you, I feel up. like that's, that's even to me, it's almost as if experience is what Richard sees as kind of like your soul or your consciousness. Cause he talks a lot about how there is no, like really that's just like a derived thing. 
<laughs> to use his favorite word. <laughs> yeah. You know, and experience is really, you know, what it is that we, that is our life. Right. What, what are we, if nothing but a series of experience, <laughs> what are we in this human? <laughs> I, I think, uh, I like the way Naval puts it too. He says, um, we are uh, a species that just, we were born, we have a bunch of uh, sensory experiences and then we die. That's the way he puts it. So yeah, I think experiences yeah. is, yeah. Like, like you said, it's just what, what you experience, like what you're, what, what your being is uh, that, that you feel and, and take in throughout your life. Yep. So this one, uh, it's always fun to see someone misunderstand what you're saying so hard that they are entirely wrong about it and not because they understood it in it in, in the correct way. Oh, it's one of those. It's one of those. <laughs> not, be not because they understood it in an incorrect, in the, in, in the correct way. It's even hard to read. I'm telling you to be incorrect about it in the correct, incorrect way, but just to get entirely wrong based on misunderstanding. Okay. So that's the key thing. Let's just go with that. So when I was writing this commentary, I, I hope I read that better than I just did. Uh, apologies, everyone. But um, commentary for that one was, listen to people for what they mean more than the exact language they use when saying it. It's easy to nit nitpick non-native English speakers, but when you but you won't learn the valuable things they may, they may be saying. It is, uh, yeah, I think it's really important too. Is is it your point to criticize others from your keyboard or build your own knowledge base? Mm -hmm. You to you to get to decide, but in the moment, be honest with yourself about what approach you're taking, so you'll be less confused when you look at the results. Yeah, it's 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 kind of one of those things where politicians too. You could see that, you know, if if you if you listened and interpreted every Peter Thiel, Peter Thiel said it's about Trump. He's like, let's see, I think his phrase was, "I uh, you shouldn't take him literally, but you should take him seriously." So I think that's something when you're, when you're listening to Richard, for example, maybe you, well, I, I don't really have a, a, a base to apply this to, but uh, perhaps when Richard says something that you totally don't understand, it doesn't make any sense to you. Maybe he's not being literal about it. He's like trying to get a point across. Yeah. Like, using analogies and, yes. and storytelling. He's really good at that. He does a lot of that. And the events and experiences still trip me out. That's crazy. I'm glad we discovered that today. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And then uh, last one, we'll just do okay. longevity again. Is it an, is, is it one of the nine secrets or is it, is it like the, the hidden 10th? Do you want to keep it nine because three, six, nine, that's the flow of the universe type of thing. Or did, is it just so important that it's outside the nine secrets, but it must be in the book. It's up to Richard to, uh, mm -hmm. to know that. But longevity doesn't need a lot of explanation. We know that uh, he's heavily involved and interested in actually investing in medical research to save people's lives. Maybe we'll team up with Aubrey one day. Maybe we'll get a heart foundation. I, I believe that that is his means to an end. Crypto is the means to an end to doing to to becoming one of the greatest human beings ever. Like imagine if he if you have a billionaire actually putting money to be effective towards anti aging getting people to live to be 150 going down as one of the pioneers who funded organized and managed the process of getting the treatments to people. Uh, that sounds like one of the greatest human beings. So if his goal is glory, that uh, seems to be on the list. That's uh, my speculation at least. So on this one, yeah. What is your, uh, what's, what's some of the favorite thing? I guess we'll kind of wind down on this one. Why, why do you think this chapter is important? Oh, okay. So I got, I got this one. <laughs> Longevity is my favorite chapter. It is. All right. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Like there it. are, you can tell that Richard was on fire when he was writing all of this stuff. Cause it's just phenomenal. There's chunks of it. it some of this has been moved around too, because not, there was parts that weren't, didn't make sense in longevity. Like they belonged in other parts of the book. But there's a good solid few pages of him just like I I had never heard him, I think, so passionately speak about these topics. And it's really 
that, that might have been another another moment that kind of rekindled the fire was just like reading this stuff and being like oh my gosh like what a compelling a lot of it could be in the intro too i feel like a lot of it is just you can tell he's like rapid kind of trying to wrap up and summarize and say a lot of really great information and not so much if you just read the intro and longevity that i feel like is a super book super mini book in itself and those wow. those aren't long either of them i don't think but it's it's really phenomenal it's it's definitely if you want to know who richard is that's a good chapter that's a good place to start just read the longevity chapter yeah it's uh I'll just pick one of these to <laughs> just I like going back and reading some of the stuff I wrote just kind of because because I'm going through it too especially the, this one because this was the third one in the three-part series of Survive. and at this point I'm just like okay I just need to get this done I'm gonna you know so there's a little bit of angst there it's a little bit of, I'm yeah. sure you can relate there's a little bit of like I'm just gonna I, I don't I'm not gonna be extremely polished on it I'm just gonna like say what I'm thinking when I think about these quotes so yeah that's just not cool obviously. So what are you going to do about it? A little bit of aggressive max on that. Um, yeah. So the quote, uh, uh, you can do something, right? We are at a time where we do not have to pretend there's nothing we, that can be done. There are things that can be done, such as Silicon Valley tech billionaire, Peter Thiel, huge fan, by the way, said uh, they're underfunded. No one cares about them. Poor Aubrey de Grey. Aubrey's coming on the show uh, March 6th, by the way, everyone. Uh, ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, for the, it's, it's going to be great. I'm very excited for that. Poor Aubrey de Grey has been giving talks at TED and at Google. No one believes. They're just listeners sitting there thinking, eh, crazy guy. Death is cool. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, you don't you don't need to think or talk about it every day as that would be probably distracting for most people. But stop pretending it's not going to happen sooner or later. Assuming right. you'd like to live to be 150 or so if we don't start funding living longer research. Yeah, let's do that. Boom. Let's live longer. I'm about it. <laughs> I would prefer to live longer than less long. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think given the choice, given the the option, given the ability to spend my time, uh, that's it's not only so. First of all, you can start with being selfish, but then once selfish meaning you know you want yourself to live longer. Cool. Right. That's enough. Really, you don't even need to go farther than that. Don't you want to live a longer life? I'm sure there's some people who don't, whatever, that's a different story. But like in general, nobody's looking forward to dying. So once you once you get to that part, cool. You want to work on it. You want to fund it. You want to support it. You selfishly want to live longer. That's all you need. But if you go to the next level and think that, hey, if, you, if I can live longer and maybe people around me can live longer, and wow, maybe the whole world. So you're like, you're not even affecting yourself, your family, you're affecting this broader world. If you believe that, you know, we're all connected, you know, lives have value, more people, the better, all these narratives as well, uh, which I think there's, there's a lot of good things uh, that you could say about them. You're helping people. If you like to help people, help them not die. How about that? If you could do that in a passive way, like you can actively work on the therapies, but you're not the one that has to, you know, inject them or give them the pills. You, like we have people who can scale this issue. We have doctors that can handle all this stuff uh, eventually once we have the research. So if you can do that and you don't have to do anything, but believe it and not be pro death and donate if you want to just don't be a denier, I guess uh, beyond the selfish part of just wanting to live longer, you can help a lot of people do the same thing. Yep. So uh, I think there's like, what have you got to lose? There's unlimited ups. It's like asymmetric upside to this. Like, what have you got to lose? If you want to, you know, do you want to donate whatever it is, how much you can afford, but just, I guess don't be pro death. That's like stage one. Mm -hmm. Don't act like it shouldn't happen. Don't act like people are crazy for working on it because uh, it's, it's, it's possible. We're getting there just underfunded currently. Yeah. Yep. I think that people will start to realize, I think more and more, just like any new technology, it's, it seems like it's a new concept <laughs> i guess even though i'm sure it's not uh at all but people aren't used to the thought of whole like and this just this really speaks to my own heart because i went through this change of changing my diet and my habits and really becoming well-rounded and holistic in that manner 
So, you know, the fact that people don't realize that, oh, wait, I can work on my not aging as a whole and not just have to worry about when I get heart disease or if I get cancer or, you know, this, that or the other thing. It's more about that ancient saying, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. I feel like that can be related to longevity because it's not a matter of doing something to combat something that's killing. I mean, it is, <laughs> but, but it's on, it's on such, such a greater scale, right? It's, it's reversing or, you know, working, t- giving your body the nourishment and giving it what it needs in order to stay young and think young and be young. And that to me also goes with this, the very, uh, I don't know if esoteric is the right word, but the thought that the placebo effect nearly, right? So, mm. you know, I believe that thoughts do become things and in, in, in not in, you know, yeah, kind of in the woo-woo way, but like also in a very, there's been studies about the way that people's mental, and I, I just, I have friends, I've seen people go through these different horrendous things, but because their mental state is so positive and they're so just thinking about health and recovery I think they're, it, I think it can happen that people that have that positivity outlook and mindset can heal faster and be healed and, you know, in ways that people who just are focused on the, you know, the pain and, you know, the destruction of their body or whatever it is that's going on, you know, it's, I think, believe that worry and sadness make you sicker. It just is a Definitely. perpetual cycle. Yeah, it's it's optimist versus pessimist. It's like, mm-hmm. in, at least in the long run, optimists win. I mean, it, it's and you don't have to be a naive optimist. You can just be, the way I look at it is, whatever happens, I try to get the best out of it. I try to look at it as a positive experience, whether it's a learning, whether it's a lesson, whether it's uh, teach, let, let it teach me something. I think let everything that happens to you, good or bad, teach you something. Mm. And it's hard to, something bad happens to you it's hard to get something out of it because you're focused on being angry or you're focused on not doing it again or you're focused on getting away from it or however you deal with with things like that everyone deals with differently but if you're able to just say okay this happened for and maybe that too maybe that's part of i believe everything happens for a reason so if you believe everything happens for a reason there must be something you can take away from any experience whether it be positive or negative and that's helped me a lot. Just get mm. through something will happen. And I'm just like, I don't, whatever, D- water off my back. D- like the duck yeah. analogy I've been using, water off my back. It's, it's fine. Let There's me also give the, my... oh, go ahead. No, it's, it's good. Go the, ahead. the phrase, this too shall pass, right? Whether it's good or whether it's bad. It's just, it's also going to not be happening at, at some moment. I feel like, sorry, we got, got real deep there. But hey, that's what Sci Vibe's mm. about. <laughs> <laughs> Sci Vibe is about challenging you to think. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm all for that. Um, hey, Wild, a wonderful SJ. What, what do you want to take us out on? What, uh, what, can, what hopeful message or looking forward statement or otherwise uh, endearing deal can we, uh, can we end the stream on? I just want to say it's been real. <laughs> This last few months, honestly, this last few months have been real tough for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. And it's really nice to see it's but it's interesting to me that it's it's a financial thing, because for me, it's so much more than that. But for a lot of people, it is, you know, like, of course, and that's where that's what it's based on. Yes, like we are here because crypto and like that's what's going on. But um, it, it's nice to see this little pump. And people get more excited about things. And I can't wait to see all of the hard work that so many people have put in through these last few months on different projects and different, like from art to, you know, coding to sci vibes, like all of these different things are being worked on. And we've had all this time to do all this stuff. And, and now we get to celebrate a little bit. And I think that's going to continue. And we're just going to get to keep keep doing that. So don't don't lose don't lose sight of what you were holding on to through this time, I think is what I want to say. That's that's a great message. Yeah. It's, it's been a brutal bear market, but at least recently uh, Hex has shown some amazing up power. So we, we certainly hope that continues and uh, we hope that 
Pulse Chain launches when it's ready, and 2023 becomes the best year yet for Hexkins, Pulsekins, and Cyvivors, right? Could be. Yeah. Could be. That's what we, that's what we hope, at least. Um, everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'll be back in two hours, a little bit over, with Matt from Liquid Loans. And we'll be talking about Liquid Loans stuff and productivity. And yeah, he wants to talk about some uh, self-development stuff, too. He's had a journey. Uh, he went to Southeast Asia uh, now. And he's uh, uh, he's enjoying himself and doing some meditation, probably, and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, we'll get into that as well in a couple hours. So, uh, yeah, everyone tune into that. Go to uh, go follow SJ on Twitter a- at a wild SJ, uh, and then all the platforms a wild SJ. All the things, yeah, every single awesome. one. T dot me slash Cyvive uh, if you would like to join their Cyvive or Telegram group. And yeah, if you want to look at more commentary on the blog, I did all the chapters, regardless of their names, uh, at uh, <laughs> rhmax.org slash blog. You can go find that out as long as, as well as Fix the World. Yeah, we didn't talk about Fix the World today. Fix the World, yeah. Richard's second book. Yeah, two books. Billionaire, billionaire wrote two books, actually, two books. Mm-hmm. And um, that's something that, yeah, I was, I was going to say, too, that if the editor does a good job and all that with SciVive, Maybe she gets fixed the world next. Maybe that's yeah, uh, yeah. It's much one. smaller too. So, I, I've I've told her I was, I was like, hey, there's another book. So if uh, things go well, we may uh, entertain your services again, uh, Miss Editor. So please, please do good. Please, please, please make book go up to the up to the right. <laughs> yeah, book go up. No, this way. I keep doing the wrong way. <laughs> awesome, yeah. everyone. Well, pleasure as always, uh, SJ. Uh, thanks for the positive atmosphere experience and. And we hope you get some rest and uh, and and don't get burned out because uh, we need you. Aww. We need you in the community. Shucks. No, I feel great. It's been wonderful. And thanks for having me. And thanks for all you do. It's, you know, it's good to be around like-minded, passionate people. Likewise, likewise. Well, on that note, sci-vive and five, 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 everyone. <laughs>